The content in this video is also explained in a written tutorial that you can find here or in the description below these videos. If you'd like to follow the text in this video, make sure you've turned on closed captioning. There may be times when you would like to be able to see your file, such as the one at the bottom of this Neatline record, uh, in a larger window up at the top of the record along with the description. We can add images into the Neatline Records body area, and these uh, can be drawn directly from the Omeka item itself. So if we first navigate to the file, and I'm going to open it in a new tab, and this takes us directly to that file, and we have to copy the file URL with the uh, file extension attached, and then click HTML next to body in the Neatline editor. This opens a new window where we can uh, do more formatted uh, customization of our text. We can add in hyperlinks and we can add in images. So I'm going to move to a new line and click this image button. Paste in the URL into the URL text box. I can add alternative text that describes that link for accessibility purposes. And I can control the height and width. Notice in our preview that right now the image is coming in as very large. I might want to make the width, let's say, 250 or 275. And this will more closely match the width of the Neatline bubble for the record. As long as we keep this little icon, the lock, closed, our width and height will change in proportion to one another, uh, so it will maintain the correct scale of the image. If we unlock that, this uh, scale can be changed by changing just one of the parameters, width or height. So it's a good idea to keep that lock closed. We can also control how much space is between the text and the image by controlling the H space and the V space, and these take values that correspond to pixels. So if I want the horizontal space to be, let's say, 10 pixels, that will give us a little extra space on the left side of the image, and then vertical space will also do 10, and that adds a little bit of space between the text and the image. You can also set the alignment to left or right. And in this link tab up here at the top, I can control uh, where this image goes. So right now I'm embedding an image, but it is not going to be linkable. In this link tab, the second tab here, I could paste in the same URL and then change what is called target to new window to ask Neatline to open the image in a new window if a user clicks on it. So let's click OK, and to get out of this area, we click this four arrows sign to close, and then save. In the body window, we now have some additional text and code, and this is written in HTML. So rather than seeing our image in this editing box, we see the HTML code for it. But if we scroll up to the top of our Neatline record in the view window, we see that it's been added here. And now I can click on it, and it automatically opens in a new tab. This new tab can be important for making sure your users can get back to your Neatline exhibit easily uh, without needing to use the back button. For users that are accustomed to working in HTML directly, you can type HTML directly into the body box and have it work, or you can navigate to Edit HTML and then click the Source button to see the HTML source editor. So now I will save again. And let's say this time I want to add a hyperlink into my text here. I'll go back into Edit HTML and navigate to, let's pick a word, let's say um, we will link out to uh, another item. 
just by selecting this text and then clicking the link button at the top and making sure that where it says link type URL is selected and I can then paste in another URL. So I will go back into my Omeka site and perhaps this time I will link to an exhibit. I have the exhibit URL, I will paste that in here and I'll click OK. And as with the image, if I go to target up here at the top and select new window, that will open that link in a new window, keeping my Neatline exhibit open for my users. So now I will click OK and close and notice more HTML has been added into my body box. And once I save, I can click on that link and it takes me out to the page uh, that I want to show. This can be done for images and links within Omeka or external to Omeka. Now let's take a look at how to embed interactive media. Let's say rather than an image, I want to show a 3D model here. Here is an example of a model and any kind of media video, 3D model, map, will have some kind of share uh, information uh, connected with it in a web browser. Sometimes you'll see the embed bo button, sometimes you will see share, and if you click on share you may find the embed code. This is certainly true for YouTube and we'll look at that in a moment. I'm going to click on embed though here in Sketchfab and I need to copy all of this code found in the embed viewer and returning to edit HTML I could paste this in here but I'm also wanting to remove my image so I'm going to select the image here and delete and this time I do need to go into this source editor and on a new line paste in my code and this time I need to control the width again, but I want to do it using a percentage. So within this whole area of code, locate width and change what will be a pixel value to a percent. So 100% within quotations. And you may need to do this in multiple places, so take a look through your code, look for other places where width is specified, and change that. I think I'm okay for now. So now I will return to source, and oh, there it is. It's appearing in my preview window. If I close this edit HTML window and save again, here it is in my Neatline record and I can click play on the 3D model and it will load for me and I can interact with it as I would in Sketchfab. In YouTube I can also find this link. Let's say I want to embed this model and this is a video animation this time, I can navigate down to Share on YouTube. And rather than copying this link here, I can click Embed. And this time I have a little bit shorter line of code, but I could go back into my Edit HTML, go back into the Source Editor, carefully remove only my embed, or I could keep it, but in this case I'm going to remove it from Sketchfab. Paste over my iframe, and once again look for that width and change it to 100%. And close that window, save, and now we have a YouTube video embedded.